Hi, everyone, and welcome to our talk. My name is Shuo Jinghang, and I work for the Education and Research Enablement Team at ARM. Today, I would like to echo the theme of this year's Research Summit and talk about how ARM can help address these global issues through education. As many of you would probably agree, our industry is evolving at a rapid pace. And this poses a huge challenge for our universities and the schools. Why? Because they also need to keep up. It's part of their duty to provide not just a degree, but also a series of teaching programs to their students. So when they become graduates, they are more competitive and successful in the job market. This is partially why universities today want to maintain a strong link with industry. However, we all know this is not an easy task. Lecturers may have their own research duties, which will keep them fairly busy. And they may not always have the right access or the support from companies out there to adopt the latest tools in their teaching. After all, if nothing is broken in the lab, why bother changing the curriculum? And people may as well argue, University is supposed to teach the fundamentals. Once the students learn the methodology, they should thrive by themselves. Well, maybe. But when we see a whole class of students working on some outdated development boards with no updated software, we know that industry academic link is broken. And this is why at ARM, we not only just provide technologies, but also we contribute directly to the development of educational content, especially when we are at the center of one of the largest ecosystems in computer industry. Our vision here is to play a leading role in plugging this educational gap. So students today are learning the necessary skills needed by the industry tomorrow. Therefore, our mission is to help academics adopt the latest technologies provided by ARM and its rich ecosystem partners. We started the ARM University program many years ago, and our core offering is called the Education Kit. We cover a wide range of topics, including embedded system design, Internet of Things, system on chip design, computer architecture, and so on. Each Education Kit comes with a set of teaching materials, including lecture slides, lab manuals, code solutions, and finally, software licenses. Each kit is designed to support 10 to 14 weeks of curriculum. So as a lecturer, you can start teaching a subject right away. Most of our education kits are compatible with one or more hardware platforms provided by our silicon partners or OEM manufacturers that use industry standard ARM-based technologies. As you can see, we have a pretty busy roadmap things keeps changing, we aim to revamp these etiquettes every four years. In reality, it's usually more frequent than that. In 2020, we have launched several new etiquettes, along with some revamps. Today, I would like to highlight three of them, the computer architecture, VLSI design, and the Internet of Things. Next, I'd like to invite my colleagues Francisca Tan, Oinkro Benafa, and Mark Allen, to share with you more details on these etiquettes. Hello, I'm Francisca Tan, a Senior Development Engineer in ARM Education, and today I would like to talk to you about the Computer Architecture Education Kit that we provide. The Computer Architecture Education Kit is basically a set of Computer Architecture Fundamentals teaching material that we provide for free. In this kit, we provide a full set of lecture slides and lab exercises along with the solutions and code. Some of these lecture slides have brief case studies of some modern processors, such as the Cortex-A76, Cortex-A65, Mali-G77 GPU, just to name a few. We find that such case studies can help learners better understand how some of the computer architecture concepts are applied and implemented in modern processors today. In the lab exercises that we provide, learners will be able to implement basic computer architecture concepts 
in a simple processor core design itself called the ARM Education Core. So what is the ARM Education Core? It is basically a five-stage simple processor core developed for education purposes only. It serves as a baseline processor of limited capabilities that learners can gradually improve upon. In other words, learners will be able to modify this core to apply and implement various concepts such as single cycle instruction processing, pipelined instruction processing, and data hazard solutions. Please note that the usage of the ARM Education Core and its modification is subjected to an end user license agreement for the kit. The ARM Education Core comes along with the documentation, assembly test files, test bench file, and make files. The lab exercises that we provide also include step-by-step -step instructions which are based on the usage of the free Icarus Verilog Simulator, GTK Wave to view waveforms, and the GCC compiler. In terms of specification, the ARM Education Core is written in Verilog 2005 and implements a subset of the ARM V8A A64 instruction set architecture. The ARM Education Core is a 64-bit architecture that processes 32-bit instructions. The diagram on the right shows a brief overview of the core data path from one of the lab exercises. More information about this can be found in the kit itself. This slide summarizes the syllabus taught in the Education Kit lectures and labs. The full set of lecture slides provided are ready for use in a typical 10-12 to 12 week undergrad course. And we wrap up with a last module on a typical system on chip or SOC case study, where various computer architecture concepts taught previously are brought together and applied in an SOC. The lecture slides also have additional lecture notes, which lecturers may find helpful during teaching. The lab exercises provides a pedagogy flow and step-by-step -step instructions on using the ARM Education Core, understanding its microarchitecture, and then learning about how to implement pipelines, folding path, stalls, and control hazard solutions in the core itself. Hi, my name is Benafa Oyinkro. I am a development engineer with ARM Education. I will be presenting about ARM Education latest offering, which is a VLSI Ed Kit titled VLSI Fundamentals, a practical approach. The VLSI Education Kit is designed to teach students the fundamentals of VLSI design and application of the concepts learned in simulation, verification, and physical implementation of a simplified microprocessor. The VLSI Education Kit consists of introductory to mid-level lecture and lab materials which can be taught to electronic and computer engineering students. The lecture slides provide students with background knowledge on topics such as transistor theory, path delay estimation, design of combinational and sequential logic circuits, and conditions or constraints that may affect the operation of such circuits. The lab exercises offered in our VLSI Education Kit are designed to introduce and guide students through schematic capture, synthesis, simulation and layout editing. Ultimately, at the end of the labs, students would have simulated and completed the layout of a simplified 8-bit processor, which supports a subset of the ARM V7 instruction set. The data part of the processor is 8 bits, and the number of registers are 8. A multi-cycle microarchitecture was selected for the processor. The instructions in this processor are 32 bits. So the instruction register comprises four 8-bit registers loaded over four cycles of instruction fetch. The labs also guide students through using standard tools for schematic capture, gate level simulation, synthesis, 
layout editing and verification checks, such as DROC and LVS checks. The picture on the right shows a simplified processor core, including its parts completely routed. Some blocks, such as the controller, ALU decoder, data path, ALU, and word slices are highlighted. Here, you will see a list of topics covered in the lecture modules, which consists of presentations and slides that come with additional lecture notes, and also details of the activities students will engage in using our lab materials. At the end of the lab, students would have used CAD tools, such as Cadence Virtual to draw transistor level schematic, symbol layout for simple logic gates, and word slices. Students would also have assembled the data part including word slices at schematic and layout level. Students would have synthesized a logic block from Verilog using Synopsys Design Compiler. Students would have used Encounter for place and route. Students would have taped out the completed processor, its layout and parts in GDSI format. Finally, the education kit is freely available and donated to interested faculties. Thank you. Hello, my name is Mark and I'm a development engineer for ARM Education and I'll provide an overview of our Internet of Things Education Kit. The Internet of Things Education Kit offers an array of educational materials that cover vital topics when considering developing an end-to-end -end IoT system. The offering comes in the package of PowerPoint lecture slides, lab documents, quizzes and an exam paper. Some of the most important topics covered are the Internet of Things itself, what is it, how does it work, why did it arise, hardware and platforms, the content introduces the topic of embedded systems, features of embedded systems that are crucial for IoT, and it also covers IoT system architectures and standards. This includes information around cloud, edge and fog computing. Connectivity. Obviously, a core part of the Internet of Things is the connectivity and ability to communicate between devices. Communication protocols such as Bluetooth, BLE, Zigbee, LoRaWAN, and narrowband IoT are covered. Security. Another core and very important part tackled within the material is the security of the Internet of Things. The content looks into a real-world example of an IoT system and its vulnerabilities how to potentially secure these vulnerabilities and it also looks at encryption and threat modeling. Cloud computing. This material touches on the concept of the cloud, virtualization and containers and cloud communication protocols. These are some general areas that are covered but the content is far more extensive and outlines a number of related topics. One of the best parts of the kit is a hands-on lab that looks into developing an end-to-end -end IoT system from a development board all the way to a mobile application. The app is designed to categorize activities such as walking, running, or being stationary. The development board monitors movement and sends this data to a device management platform. From there, it is sent to a cloud service where a simple classification model is run on the data to determine whether the user is walking, running, or stationary. From here, it is sent to the mobile app and displayed to the end user in a visualized format. Finally, here we have an extensive syllabus of all the topics covered in both the lectures and the labs. The kits are typically designed to correspond to a 10 to 12 week course and provide adequate material for different aspects of learning, such as theory and practical. Lectures have an additional note section to aid lecturers and other adoptees in understanding and presenting the material. This brings us to the end of this talk. I hope you all find this helpful. I've attached several useful links here. Please get in touch if you would like to find out more about ARM's education and the research enablement programs. Thank you and bye-bye. Welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us for our live Q&A session uh, in this multi-track series of pre presentations this are afternoon. My name is Robert Yanello and I'll be moderating uh, this Q&A session uh, and I would really like to thank my colleagues 
Shojin, Francisca Benafa and Mark for their excellent presentation around addressing global challenges through education. Um, as part of the education team, that's, that's a subject that's really close to my heart as well. And I'm uh, very much in, involved in shaping uh, the kind of direction of the education team in terms of how we can address uh, these glo glo global challenges. So um, without further ado, I think we'll uh, get, get stuck into questions. Um, and uh, just going through the list now. So I see that there's a lection, uh, sorry, there's a question regarding uh, the use of arms education kits in teaching. So can lecturers use only part of the education kit or all of the kit in their teaching? So perhaps if I can ask Xiao Jin to answer that particular question. Yeah, that's a very good question. So all of our uh, education kits are designed to uh, facilitate uh, uh, your teaching so yeah uh, you can take any uh, module or any lab uh, from the education kit and to um, make it suitable for your own uh, teaching curriculum so yes we encourage that actually yeah. great okay um, I see another question here is uh, how long will an academic need to wait after the education kit request has been submitted um, so maybe yeah. again that's one for you Shojin Yes, so uh, the approval uh, process takes um, up to two weeks, but usually um, if it's a very straightforward case within a couple of days, uh, uh, the request will be approved and you can get access. Right, and yes, I can vouch for that. So I, I work closely with our operations team here within the education group and they're very efficient in processing yep. these these requests so uh the turnaround is quite is quite swift okay so we've got we've got a couple of questions coming in around um the vlsi education kit so i think francisca would be the best person to handle these so the first one is um could i modify the arm education core or even extend the arm education core rtl so um, the ARM Education Core is actually part of the Computer Architecture Education Kit, and um, you, if you if you adopt the Computer Introduction to Computer Architecture Education Kit, you can modify EDUCORE um, as long as it's in accordance to the end user license agreement that comes with it. Um, if you would like to modify it and you would like to publish your work, uh, please do um, seek um, contact us and seek permission before you do that. And um, if you think that it would benefit the, the wider education community as well, that's something that um, we, we are very keen to collaborate on. So please do email us at university at arm.com. Right. And my uh, apologies, it was only one question on the computer ar architecture, of course. The next one, sorry, the next two rather, are around VLSI design. So um, these two are for you, Benafa. So the first question. Um, in the VLSI ed kit, will students have to design um, the simple processor completely from scratch? Okay, thank you for the question. Um, students will not have to design the processor, the simple processor from scratch. What we did in the VLSI ed kit is to provide some blocks that are incomplete and then the lab materials will guide the students in completing these blocks. So students will design the schematics the symbol and then complete the layout and then use your auto place and route tool to finally route everything and get the chip taped out in GDSI format. Okay, and just as a follow-up question to, to that, so um, how does someone obtain the EDA software licenses required for the VLSI fundamentals course? Okay, um, we made use of, um, for these tools, we use Cadence um, uh, to, uh, tools from Cadence and Synopsis and um, the institution requesting for our course would have to make an agreement with, with these companies and get the license license to to um, run these labs. We do not provide the tools from them. So, however, there are libraries that are provided by that that we referred to the lecturers to make use of. These libraries are free. They are hosted by the NCSU, that is the North Carolina State University, and then the 
University of Utah. Um, these libraries are free online and they can use them for the course itself. Right, right. And really just further to that point as well, I mean, we're, we're, we're very um, open to the idea of collaborating with our university partners in terms of uh, supplementing um, the lab exercises, especially, uh, but the content generally uh, in our ed kits. So, you know, if there are any suggestions um, for updates or um, maybe additions to the content, we'd really like to hear from the academic community um, and kind of um, discuss that with you further because, uh, you know, it, 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 the technology is changing all the time. So collectively, I think being able to um, keep keep on top of that is 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 a good thing. Um, okay, so moving on to the next question, and I think this one would be for Mark actually, uh, and this relates to our um, Internet of Things um, material. So given the importance of security in IoT, uh, what areas of security does the EdKit look at? Yeah, so we have an entire lecture within the education kit that is dedicated to security um, within the Internet of Things. Um, it starts off by looking at the general importance of security within IoT. Um, it then moves on to look at things such as threat modeling so students are able to identify threats within IoT systems. Um, we back this up with an actual example, um, a fitness tracking app, and we look at how this is vulnerable to attack which also links into our lab, which is designing this application from the ground up as an end-to-end -end system. And then we also look at mitigation of these risks, so things such as encryption and how these can be used in IoT systems to prevent um, malicious intent or secure up IoT systems. Yeah, and that's something worthwhile, uh, I guess, emphasizing as well. So, uh, you know, uh, we've all heard kind of the the kind of buzz around IoT uh, and and how quickly it's being adopted but 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 really uh it's the security aspect of iot is really is really going to come into play to ensure that um we get the mass adoption that 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 perhaps we've been anticipating for quite a while now so the fact that i think we cover that in the education kit i think uh is is a good thing and it exposes students to to that kind of um important issue um so a couple of other questions we've got some time so um Maybe this one is for you, Shojin. So how do we choose which topic to produce education kits in? That's a yes. really good question. I mean, we yes. often have that discussion internally as well. Yes, uh, that's a good question. Um, so we do a lot of, you know, user research. We look at the needs from academic community. Uh, we also look at, you know, uh, uh, general electronic engineering and computer science uh, curriculums. Uh, and we also um, anticipate uh, the future trend and, you know, sometimes we come up with, you know, this direction would be uh, important uh, uh, field for students to learn and for ARM to actually uh, contribute because um, in these cases, mostly uh, we can provide uh, suitable, you know, um, practical exercises using you know, our platforms and hardware available. So yeah, it's a complicated process. It is a complicated process. And I just, just to add to your excellent answer, Shojin, I think what we would really appreciate is having the conversation with the academic community out there. So, so we've based our, our ed education kits on a typical kind of core curriculum in electronic engineering and computer science. Um, however, that area is changing all, all the time. So the, the assumptions we make about what would be the best areas uh, to teach, especially at the foundational level, may, may, may be changing. So, uh, you know, it's always worthwhile um, to hear from our um, ac academic partners. So if, um, if you've got any suggestions in terms of um, future content areas, uh, please feel free to, I think, email us at you, 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 university at arm.com and we'll be able to kind of continue the conversation. So uh, very happy to hear from everyone in terms of what your thoughts are on the future direction of uh, the subject overall. Uh, I think we, ha we have one last question um, from the um, 
from the community. Um, so I want to collaborate with you in developing new content. How should I go about it? Well, I think I might have answered that, but Shojin, do you want to add anything further to, to that? Yeah, as uh, Robert mentioned, uh, we're always open for uh, collaboration uh, and new opportunities. So please drop us a line at uh, university at arm.com and we'd like to you know, talk to you. Great, great. Um, I'm just seeing if there are any more questions. It doesn't look like, like it. So um, I think we'll wrap it up there. So I wanted to thank um, Shojin, uh, Francisca, Benafa and Mark for their presentation this afternoon. Uh, and I'd like to thank you all who've at attended the Q Q and A session today. We found your questions really interesting and insightful. We hope that we'll be able to continue to deliver um, uh, a quality educational service to you and to pr provide your students with up to date teaching materials in in very important subject areas. So with that, uh, I think we'll take our leave. So thank you very much. It's been a pleasure speaking to you today, and we Thanks, look Robert. forward to continuing the conversation. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye. Okay.